Hey everybody, it's Josh again, and uh, well here it is, here's the T-Max brushless conversion, how I currently have it set up. I've been uh, seeing some of you guys' questions, and so I want to show you what the mountain stuff look, looks like now. Um, and I got the battery, I didn't have the battery tray on there before. Um, not really perfectly how I would like it, but what I could come up with in a short time. So here we go. Here's the motor mount. What I did with the motor mount is I got a angle, like a 90 degree angle, I think it was like a brace or something from Home Depot. But uh, you can see it there. But uh, I got one that had a hole in the middle about where I needed. I went ahead and made it a little bigger for the shaft there to stick through. Um, and then I kind of elongated it, kind of got my Dremel out and made the hole bigger. And the two holes on the side too, kind of drilled those, made those bigger. But yeah, I got those. And then... I had it just like that without this front bracing on here. I had it just that way, but I think it ended up getting a little bit of flex to it and um wasn't quite lining up with the the uh, spur gear correctly, so I went ahead and took it over and welded this little piece of metal onto the front. You can kind of see it there. Not a real good weld job, but it works. Um Put it down, bent a bent a 90 degree angle on the bottom, screwed it onto the the chassis there. Let's see. I got the metal pinion. Got a metal spur gear too. This motor, I don't know if you can see. This motor is pretty big. Uh, the the little heat sink here is about the size of a standard. That's what is it? 540 engine. I think that's what it is. And um this motor sticks out both ends quite a bit. It was uh I got it off Hobby King. I'll try to find the links, put them down in the bottom description. But uh yeah, the heat sink had a fan. First time I went in the dirt, magnets of the fan caught the uh some of the dirt and stopped spinning. So I just took it off and it didn't overheat with it off there, so I just let it that way. Let's see here. Here's my metal spur gear. 58 tooth energy metal spur gear. I really like it. Works really good. A little bit noisier, but here I haven't had any problems with the gears eating each other or anything, so pretty happy with that. And a lot of people ask about the transmission. The transmission is still the stock transmission. What I did, you, you can get the kits. I bought the kit for to make it a single speed. That took out that whole little clutch part of it. And then uh, I also got the kit to take out reverse. So after you put both those kits in there, it does widen up the gears quite a bit. So it's a little bit stiffer. It's not. It's a little bit stronger. It doesn't really. I don't know. I kind of think it helps it out a little bit so it doesn't strip the gears out in it because that's quite a bit of torque from that motor. But I took both of those out and now it's just a direct drive. When you did that with the other parts back in it, it no longer would uh, it no longer would I mean it, it wouldn't spin when, when you roll it forward and backwards. It would it would stay still and it'd have to get up to a certain speed before it would kick in and actually go. But uh, let's see. That's that, the tranny. And let's see, here's the, oh, the pinion and the spur alignment. This is what I did for that. Um, each of those, the bolts in the actual mount are just a screw. It's just a plain hole, screw in a nut, and what I did was on the bottom, 
Let's see if it'll adjust here. We go on the bottom is where I cut. I made the holes and I elongated them so I could get the uh, kind of like the adjustment forward and backwards on that. And as long as you're fairly close, you, you can go forward and backwards. I mean, you don't have a lot of room to spare. I mean, that's that side. And then the back, I mean, we're close to that shock. Not touching it, though. But uh, I got that on there. Good. And then all the alignment. So, so that's going forward and forward and back. All the alignment across how close you want to the spur is done by the motor itself. I don't know if you can see that there. There we go. All that's done by the motor going forward and back. And that's that part. So let's see. And I, I really like that motor. I'm really happy with it. Uh, kind of iffy sometimes buying stuff off Hobby King. I don't spend a whole lot of money on things. On that speed control, that's a whole other story. We'll get to that. But uh, I'm really happy with that motor. The only thing I don't like is the wires coming off the motor are a little stiff. It's almost like the whole wire is totally soaked with solder almost in a way. But I'm not really sure. I never take off the, uh, never pulled back the uh, insulation to kind of see what it was. But, uh, yeah, that's the only thing I'm not caring a whole lot about for that motor, but other than that, it's been working perfect. Here's a speed control. It's a Hobby King 150 amp. Um, I just never liked this speed control. I bought one. It ended up failing. It was kicking really bad. Ended up sending it back for an RMA. And three months later, I finally got this one. And this one doesn't do the kicking, but it's just not very smooth. Every once in a while, um, you know how you barely pull back on the throttle? It's supposed to gradually increase. Sometimes this will just all out full throttle or full brake. And that motor full brake, when this thing hits, I mean, it'll just flip over on its top like nothing. So, uh, yeah, just not very impressed. Not very smooth, I guess. Kind of buggy it kind of feels. I've tried different radios. I've tried this regular, what's it, 72 megahertz radio and my 2.4 and it's just the same thing either way I go. So, yeah, not too impressed. I think it was $70. Yeah, that's, that's that. I am kind of like to eventually, after I finish a few other projects, um, try to get a nice one how the truck runs. Um, run it quite a bit. You, you saw the video, the previous video to this one, has a video of it running on the beach with paddle tires, and uh, it ran pretty good. So, uh, yeah, I kind of like to see it with a nice speed control. It would be a lot nicer. Uh, that's that part. Here's the batteries I bought. Let's see if I can get one off here. As you can see here, I velcroed the bottoms and tops of the batteries. What I did was, uh, this will actually run four cell. Each of these are actually a two cell. I think they're 52 MAH Turnigy batteries. I really like these batteries. I run these batteries in that uh, slash, and with the regular Valenian, I can run, oh man, 20, 25 minutes. I can normally, everybody else running the regular Traxxas, uh, seven cells. I can only run one of these in the time they run two of their regular batteries. So uh, it lasts quite a long time. Pretty fast too. I mean, it's still a two cell. It's not a three, but uh, fast enough to keep up with everybody else with their seven cells. And it lasts forever, which is really nice. And here's the and yeah, what, what I did was velcro on bottom and the top. I stacked them. This one is this one and the other one I have and actually run it a 4-cell. I had a Y adapter for the connectors and uh, actually run it 4-cell and man this thing couldn't hardly keep the front end on the ground. So 
all the video, the previous video running on the beach was all just the two cell. That wasn't a four cell at all. So, uh, it I mean, you can see in the video where it's it's pulling the front end off the ground really easy. And you really got to be careful you don't flip it over. But, uh, let's see. So that's the battery. Here's the battery tray. Let's flip it around this way. I was kind of I was wanting to get a piece of carbon fiber. I found a few sites that I was going to get it, and just time constraints, I went over and bought a piece of plexiglass and made this. So this is just regular plexiglass you could pick up in any real hardware store. I got mine at Home Depot, and got these standoffs here. You can kind of see there. What I what 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 I had to do was get over the servo. That was the only place I could find on the truck. It's kind of a unused spot, can't really do a whole lot with. So I thought that'd be a perfect place for the battery, but you had to get over that speed control. Now it is setting up a little higher, so center gravity is probably a little bit higher, but every time I roll the truck, it's not from left to right, it's from either braking or taking off it rolls on its end it wheelies or noses over so uh... I don't know I don't have a problem with it being too top heavy I'm kinda I kinda like it what I did is I got kind of a uh, recessed screws got a larger drill bit and and recessed them down in put the screw down through spacers and actually run it through the bottom of the truck let's see where's that at right there you can see one and put a nut on those there's the other ones and those other holes were from previous experiments I tried batteries down on the side underneath but because uh, I saw a previous YouTube video with a guy like that but I didn't like them plus they were on the bottom risk them hitting stuff I didn't really want to screw up my batteries like that so I put it up on top but yeah here's the battery tray and then Cut some slots in it and and put some Velcro straps to hold the battery down. And also my wire, it originally I just had it loose, but it was hitting the the uh, spur gear here. So I just put it on a screw, made a loop, and get the wires in and out easy. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, those are my regular tires, of course. There's the paddles I used in the video. What are they? Let's see. Um, Proline Max Paddles. Uh, 1084. That might be a part number of theirs. Yeah, those are the paddles I used. But, yeah, that's the truck. Um... Let me know what you guys think. Uh, try to check back the with the comments every once in a while. See if there's any questions I need to answer. I'll uh, go ahead and try to find... I think a previous video has all the part numbers I used for the motor and stuff. So I'll try to find that and put it in the uh, description down below also. Um, that's about it. Thanks guys for watching. Uh, if you would, go ahead and subscribe, and I'll try to get some more videos up here soon. Uh, not also just RC cars, but I have some remote control airplanes and stuff, and different, maybe some builds and stuff coming up soon with that. But uh, thanks. Have a good day.